Flip to geometry. How you doing? This is Mr. Alley. We're jumping into lesson 4.4 and we're talking about applying congruence postulates here. Bob Jones, University Press, Chapter 4. We're getting into more ways to prove that triangles are congruent. Are you excited? I'm excited for you. Let's jump right in. So last time we talked about the fact that if you have a, a pair of angles in a triangle congruent to another pair of angles in another, tri in another, another triangle, and you have the side between them congruent, then you have two congruent triangles because of angle, side, angle. Now we're going to do something slightly different and look at what happens if that side that you know is congruent is not between the angles, but is adjacent to them. So that would be angle, angle, side. If, uh, if I had this side congruent to this side, then I would know angle, side, angle. But I don't. I have angle, angle, side. So the side that I know for sure is outside of the uh, angles. It's not between them. It's outside of them. It's adjacent. Um, that's the angle, angle, side theorem. And if you try to construct a triangle like this with the same measures of angles and the same length of side, um, and you try to draw it with different lengths here, it won't work. So um, you, you again wind up with forcing congruent triangles. And if you have angle, angle, side, you have congruent triangles. All right? It's another congruency theorem. We defined isosceles triangles last time, and an isosceles triangle, of course, is a triangle where two of the three sides are congruent. And so, um, as a consequence, if you have two sides that are congruent on a triangle, the base angles, the angles that uh, are formed between the congruent sides and the not congruent side, um, are congruent to each other. So, if two sides of the triangle are congruent, the angles opposite those sides which are defined as the base angles of an isosceles triangle, are congruent, okay? Um, so here's a picture. A triangle YXZ uh, is an isosceles. This segment and this segment are congruent. And so if you were to look at the angles opposite those sides, these two angles here, the base angles, are going to be congruent. We can prove that. Um, here we have x, y is congruent to x, z, okay, that's given, and then I'm going to draw ray x, w bisecting angle y, x, z, so I'm going to add an auxiliary line here, okay, that's just a protractor, I can use a protractor to draw a line, um, and so I have angle y, x, w congruent to x, z, x, w, these two angles here are congruent, okay? Um, and that's the definition of an angle bisector. And then I'm going to say that this this uh, ray, xw, or the segment xw, is congruent to itself. That's the reflective pro reflexive property. And then therefore I have two congruent triangles here because of side angle side. Side is congruent to itself. We've been given that these outside sides are congruent. We know that the inside angles here are congruent because we drew it that way. So I have a side angle side congruent triangle and therefore this angle and this angle have to be congruent to each other because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. There you go. We've demonstrated that already. And that leads us to another theorem. Um, the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem does work in this particular time. You can't always assume the converse. Remember, that's a common fallacy. But in this case, the converse also holds true. So if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent, and the triangle is an isosceles. You can't have two angles of a triangle be congruent to each other unless that triangle is an isosceles triangle. Okay, so that's just another way of looking at that same concept. And we can stretch that idea to include not just an isosceles triangle with two sides that are congruent, but an equilateral triangle with three sides congruent. So in an isosceles triangle, two congruent sides have two congruent opposite angles. Logically then, if a triangle has three congruent sides, then all three angles are opposite to a congruent side. And all three angles then are congruent. So you cannot have an equilateral triangle that is not also equiangular. Equiangular? It sounds like I'm saying a horse. But, uh, and, the, and the other would be true too as well, that you can't have an equiangular triangle without it being equilateral. So equilateral and equiangular are um, going to be true of the same triangles. One is not true without the other. So let's do a proof here. Let's use some of these ideas. Here we have two overlapping triangles, and this is going to be a common thing that you're going to have to work with, um, where two triangles share some aspects of each other, right? Given that angle A and D are congruent, 
and angle ABC is congruent to angle DCB, we're going to want to prove that AC, this line here, is congruent to DB, this line here. Um, if this is what they gave you, it would be wise for you to try to separate them in your mind. Draw these triangles separately and look at what we have. We have an angle and an angle that are congruent. We have another angle and another angle that are congruent. Now, stop here and think about where you're going. I want to demonstrate that this side is congruent to this side, which means I need to know that these two triangles are congruent to each other. And then I can use what? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, right? Um, and so, but I need to know that these are the same triangle. I've been given two angles. I, it doesn't help me to get the third angle. That just proves simil similarity, not congruency. So I need to find something else that I can say is the same. Let's look at these triangles. They overlap on this BC segment. BC is in both triangles. Always say what's in both triangles. That's usually one of the things you need. So BC is itself, right? Reflexive property. And so I can say, well, now I have angle, angle, side. These triangles are congruent. And then therefore, because they're congruent, I have corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent and those other segments must be the same too. So let's see it written out. Here we go. Um, I have that these angles are congruent to each other. That's given. I can then just go straight to the reflexive and say BC is the same as CB, right? It's the same thing. It doesn't matter which way I write it, which way I'm going, which triangle I'm looking at. This segment is itself. All right. And so therefore, those two triangles are congruent because of angle, angle, side. And then those two segments that I'm looking for, AC and DB, are congruent to each other because of our good friend. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We can go over that again in class if you need more help. And that concludes this section here. We're going to be looking at um, these and more theorems that demonstrate congruent triangles in this chapter. So we need to be building on this as we go. If you have any questions, please let me know, and we will address them together. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.